gods of the theater smile on us you who sit up there stern in judgment smile on us you who look down on actors and who doesn't bless this yearly festival and smile on us we offer you some Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Thespis in the Green Room. It's Bruce and Melanie, your hosts here. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Melanie? I'm good. I'm good. We're back. I know. It seems like ages, right? It has been ages. You've been trekking across the country. Well, just to Tennessee. (laughs) Okay. Well, trekking a couple states, maybe. (laughs) Or one state. I'm not that far away. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's been a little while since we've had a chance to sit and chit chat. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. So it's good to be back. Yeah, definitely. What, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, working and stuff. Seen a little working shows here stuff. and there. Seen Actually, it? saw um, uh, Power of Sale at, at the Warehouse Theater. Oh, how was that? It was really interesting. Um, it you know, it's being a new new piece it's a and new, all. Yeah, very new Brand piece. Yeah, new. Um, it kind of deals with white supremacy and that kind of thing, which oh. is you know, topic of the yeah, day. Yeah. yeah, kind of topical subject matter. And so it was really interesting to see a new piece and some of the stalwarts there on the um, Warehouse stage. Carrie uh, Seymour was uh, in that production. It was really good to see her, you know. Um, I don't know some of the other actors, but, you know, a really kind of a solid production and and, and neat to see this new piece. Mm. New theater. I always get excited when there's new work on the stage Mm -hmm. because the ones we know and love are great, great. but, you know, you got to infuse the the canon with new stuff well and once you've seen all the stuff you know not all of it of course but i mean you you can't see it all but i mean but once you've seen so much of it and then it starts to repeat you're you're always you're always looking forward to seeing something that's new and fresh right right so I believe the writer was Paul Greelong, and he's, um, if I'm saying it correctly, uh, but he's uh, involved in the television industry and some, you know, ah. very popular series. And I think he he came to the theater to um, be part of, you know, g- getting the production on its feet. Oh, right, and, right. Um, as the playwright in residence for the piece, and uh, working with the director, and so that I think that was probably overall a really wonderful experience for everybody involved. Because how often do you get to work with the playwright and right. see maybe see it take some changes as they put it together on stage and see what works and what maybe doesn't and maybe what they've got to clarify or clean up or whatever you know right so it's kind of a neat process to be part of you yeah know. absolutely mm-hmm. very good very good and i think we both encountered the book of mormon we did that's the right peace center. That, that was fun it, this is a third time through i guess the peace center and so um but still had you know good solid houses and attendance and it was fun as usual you know I, um, I yeah, <laughs> it's a funny production. It is, and, you know. I, I, I love it. I know you do. I it's think, a lot of fun, and I think it's fun too. And I think it pushes it a little too far here and there, but that's just my <laughs> opinion. But um, but it is fun. There's some really very funny numbers in it right. that just stand out. There and are, so, yeah. So I did enjoy enjoy seeing that as well. Yes, I always enjoy it. <laughs> and last mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. I went to the gala for the Spartanburg Little Theater, which is oh, their right, right, right. Okay. annual gala, a right. little bit of a fundraiser, mm-hmm. and their big season reveal. That's right. They were leading up to it. I know I kept on seeing advertisements for it's coming, it's coming, and all the kind yes. of thing, and little teasers to kind of, uh, you know, get you geared up for it. So how was it? It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a very high energy fun. night. Yeah. Um, of they course, do such a neat job of kind of presenting what's coming. Too. They do. Yeah. They do. It was so... You go in and Mm -hmm. there's food and mingling Mm -hmm. and drinks and there's uh, silent auction Mm -hmm. items that you can bid on and all that fun stuff. And then after about an hour or so of that, they encourage you into the theater where Mm -hmm. they have this whole little show, this little showcase where um, Jay Kaufman, the executive artistic director over there at the Spartan Little Theater, he comes out and he introduces himself and he makes the announcements mm-hmm. and there is a whole presentation. They had um, scenes and songs from the musicals they were doing, scenes from the shows they were doing. And in between, they thanked some sponsors, they awarded some volunteers and they had all this kind of other extra stuff going on. So it was a lovely night. A lovely I think it's night. really smart because, you know, we've been to galas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, they're great fundraisers and that kind of thing. But they too kind of get a little bit, you know, tiresome, you know, to attend so many of them because that's you know how nonprofits in the past at least have have raised money you mm-hmm. know so this is kind of neat because it's still in that kind of gala theme but it gives you it's very fresh because they're announcing and they're thanking and yeah. they're doing all that so it, 
I think it's just really smart. It felt like a show. Right. It, it felt like a party and a show. Yeah. Is what so it I, felt think that's, like. I think that's really, really yeah. clever. And yeah. it's such a wonderful setting over there anyway. You know? Right. So, yeah, it's neat. It was, and I enjoyed it, and I am super excited. And our whole topic today, Bruce, is the new seasons. That's right. So many new, I mean, new seasons all around. You yes. know? Yeah, it's great. What's coming up n- next season here in the upstate? Uh-huh. Most of, there are still some theaters that haven't announced yet. They're sure. still working on it. Uh, but most of the theaters in the upstate. Majority are out there now. Yeah. Have announced. Mm-hmm. So we were going to talk about that today. Yeah, sounds great. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. If I can wait, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. With a click, with a shock, phone will jingle, door will knock. Open the light, something's coming. Don't know when, but it's soon. Catch the moon, one handed catch. So why don't we start with the Spartanburg Little Theater 2019-2020 season. Yeah. <laughs> Mama Mia. All right. Is opening them up September yeah. 13th through 29th. Oh, the great. Agatha Christie's Murder Mystery and then there were none. Another really good show. Yeah. I mean, I love Agatha Christie, so that's yeah. cool. Yep. That's November 8th to 17th. Mhm. Hank Williams' Lost Highway. All right, I've heard of that. Of course, I've yeah. always heard of, of Hank Williams, but I've heard about heard of this particular production as well. That sounds great. It'll feature all his music, mm-hmm. uh, all his big hits, and that'll be January 10 through 19. Mm-hmm. And then a new stage adaptation. This is brand spanking new, hmm. and this will be the, I believe it's definitely the upstate premiere of the show, right, and right. I think it might just be the South Carolina, maybe even the Southeast region premiere of this really? particular. Stage adaptation of Terms of Endearment. Wow, yeah, I was going to say when I saw the title, I was like, I didn't know that was a play, you know? Yeah, so that's, now it is. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. I, do you, and maybe we, should, we need to do a little research, but this is just a question I'm throwing out there. Um, do you think it, so it wasn't a play before it was a movie, which is kind of the other way around, which things typically, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't think so. I think this was written as a screenplay. Yeah. That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then now they've made it. And interesting that they didn't make it into a musical because right. so often, often you see yep. big movies Just go into a musical. Turn into a musical. Yeah. But this isn't a would musical. Would have been a tearjerker. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been a Les Mis type. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, this is a, this is a play. And there's I'm, no music. I'm kind of excited about that. I'm excited too. Yeah. Oh, so good. we'll see that. And mm-hmm. terms of endearment. In the 80s? Was that an 80s movie? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. and starred Shirley MacLaine. and Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Yep, and Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. Yep. Mm-hmm. I remember it, and it is, it is, it's a heavy one. Yeah. It's it's not a it's not a laughing one. Although, no. I think there are light moments. Oh, yeah. There are light yeah, moments in it. It's because it's very much a life thing, you know? Yeah. So, it's laughing at some Much of the, like Steel Magnolias has yeah, some funny parts, but exactly. it's also... Very heavy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Terms of Endearment. Okay. Cool. And then they're going into their big spring musical, which is Sister Act. Another great show. Yes. Really a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, I'll be I'll be thrilled to see that production over there because they got the, the big stage space to work on with yeah. it. You know? and they so, can yeah. really jazz that up yeah. and make it all sparkly and yeah. fun. And yeah. yeah, that's gonna be great. So that's mm-hmm. May one through ten. And then this I mean, I'm excited about the whole season, but mm-hmm. I am Super, super excited. About. How excited are you, Melody? I'm so excited. Oh. I'm so excited. I'm really excited. You're pulling out your belly, girl. Okay, I go ahead. I can't wait. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. <laughs> there's, there's Summer Extra Show, mm-hmm. which they usually do a show in the summer that's a little more edgy, a mm-hmm. little more, you know, maybe not to everyone's taste. Right. Sure. Not really family friendly. Right. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely, yeah, it's, I mean, we say adult or whatever, I guess. Adult yeah. Theme yeah. It has a little bit more edge, a little more sass, a little more sure. spice to it. Yeah. And I'm so excited because this year 
It's going to be Heather's the Musical. Heather's, yeah. yeah. I know that's, <laughs> I mean, it's making its rounds now. I mean, it's just been out for a couple of years. Yeah. And, uh, um, but it's, yeah, it's definitely um, exciting for uh, people that grew up in that era with the, with the movie. Which I did. Which you did. <laughs> And, you know, have a fondness for the movie, so now to see it yes. turned into a musical. And I guess it's, you know, really, really excellent music, too. It is. I have heard some yeah. of it, and I've seen clips. I've not actually seen a full stage production of it, but it it has been making the rounds. It was done off-Broadway, and then it was off West End, and now it's on West End, and it went away and came back because wow. it was so popular on the West End. Right. And it's been happening at some various theaters, mm -hmm. regional theaters. Yeah, so it's it's I just love I love the movie because I that was my era. Sure. You know, that was kind sure. of my coming of age era and that was a big movie at my, at the time. Right. And you know, it's set in high school, so Yeah. as a teenager, of course I gravitated towards it. Yeah. And I just love that movie so much. So, I'm super excited. And so, who did you identify with in the cast? <laughs> One of the Heathers, Melanie, or was it one no, of the other girls? So. It would have been Veronica, which was played by Winona Ryder in the movie, which is kind of the, which is the lead. That, right. Of course, that's who I would identify sure. with. I mean, I wasn't, I was not like the super popular girl in high school. Right. I was not an outcast or anything. Sure. I was fine. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was doing my thing. I, right. I had friends. It was great. Yeah. Um, but no, I wasn't that kind of rule the school popular girl. That you know, you did say. you have some of those? I mean, you know, we, we talk did. about the, well, we the cliques and the popular people, but I don't remember having some, you know, rule the school girls, you know, type of thing. But. Pink, I mean, pink ladies and grease. Yeah, and then, true, true. And then Heather's had them. And now the new generation has mean girls. Right. It, they've been a staple in schools from the dawn of time, I would imagine. True, yeah. No, we had, of course, we had people who were. It was always the cheerleaders were right. kind of the, you know what I mean? So, yeah, often. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we had popular kids, you know, sure. people that were kind of the homecoming queens and, the, right. you know, that right. everybody knew them and everybody aspired to be them. I mean, not everybody, <laughs> but, you know, like we had popular kids. Of yeah. course we did. Sure. I don't remember. I mean, high school is a bit of a blur for me now, but, <laughs> um, but I don't remember it being crazy extreme right like i don't remember people being horrible to other people I just can't imagine i'm sure it probably that. happened yeah. but i don't remember it being so horrific I as you see times, in some of these yeah i remember times in school though where there was a time where i was afraid to go to school really yeah, you know, there was a couple times where i was you know you get bullied you know i was get, i got bullied here and there i mean and yet sometimes i was kind of a, a popular kid too so not not the popular kid but i mean you know had some popularity mm -hmm. and um and so but there was times with with upperclassmen that picked on lower classmen mm -hmm. you know and so I mean, there was times i think where i was a little bit of afraid to go to school really yeah yeah and uh yeah it was a little some anxiety about that at some points you know i had moments of that in junior high mm. more than i had in high school i guess by the time i was in high school i was like whatever yeah <laughs> um, I didn't sense that in high school at all. There were there were moments in junior high, particularly my first year in junior high, mm -hmm. when I was, sure. you know, that's and that's probably it's, one of the yeah. roughest transitions. It is. It is when you're coming out of primary elementary school yeah. into junior high or middle school. Yeah. Because that's a that's a big, yeah. It was different when shift. I was growing up too. Because middle school we didn't have it. It was elementary, and then you went to junior high, and then you went to high school. And our buildings changed also. So yeah, so us when too. you start for me. yeah. So when you start in junior high, junior high started in seventh grade. Yeah, me so too. So seventh, eighth, and ninth right. for ours, yes. and then high school was tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. And you changed buildings. So you started out the low man in the seventh grade, right? And then you were the big man on campus in the ninth grade, and then in the tenth grade you started again in the low. You know what I mean? The low yeah. position, and so yeah. So it was the same for you. Yeah, 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 we okay. had the same. I think it's changed in because I grew up here in Spartanburg, right? And I think that it's shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think they now have a middle school they setup. Do. Yeah, and it's I think like it's six a sixth through grade. eight or something. Yeah, I think. something like that. So, yeah. but when I was coming through, it was K through six at right. the elementary school, right? And then seven through nine at the junior high, right. and then ten, 10 through, through twelve, 12 mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the high school, right? And that's what we did, in, and different buildings. So, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm I'm excited about yeah. Heather's because it's it's such a throwback to yeah, to absolutely. My because, well, because that movie was such a big and we deal. talk about this. I mean, this is the popularity of shows because they tap your memories, you know, and what's mm -hmm. reminiscent for you of a particular period of your life. Mm -hmm. And usually, it is our younger, you know, um, period of our life that we're we're 
drawn to just mm-hmm. like when you think of jersey boys you know it's people that yeah, grew up in that nostalgia era it's, for, it's nostalgia for, for that them. for that age yeah. group so this is nostalgia and that's i think that why these shows actually succeed because they tap on nostalgia right you know, yeah. heathers is gen xer nostalgia right. and i'm a gen xer <laughs> so it's my nostalgia so i'm Very excited good. yeah cool well so very, very fun so that's Spartan Murg Little Theater. Yeah. It's a wonderful season. Very excited about that. Mm-hmm. And then there's Spartan Murg Youth Theater, which is under the Spartan Murg Little Theater umbrella, but they have their own fabulous season. Do you want to run through that brief? Sure. So they're going to be opening with Miss Nelson is Missing, mm-hmm. October 11th and 12th. Um, and then running a Charlie Brown Christmas, December 6th and 7th, which is I think that's fun. Yay. And that's another nostalgic type of show, <laughs> yeah. you know, because we all grew up watching Charlie Brown. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that they've made it into a stage uh, production. Yeah. I think- and that one's been around for generations. and gen- mm-hmm. So that's nostalgia for, for multiple so many people. generations. Yeah, that's what's and really And now cool. it's becoming nostalgia for the kids today. Yeah, I know. Incredible. I love it. Then they'll be running into Disney's Aladdin Jr., February 14th and 15th. Another fun show. Yes. And then closing their season with How I Became a Pirate, April 10th and 11th. Yes. Yeah. Adam, who we had on the show. Yeah. A few months back. A few months back. He uh, runs the youth theater mm-hmm. over there. And he was talking about How I Became a Pirate is, of course, based on a children's book, which right. a lot of these children's plays are. Right. And the writer for that is a uh, South Carolina That's right. mm-hmm. native. Yeah. So. In fact, I think they premiered that show at the South Carolina Children's Theater. Did they? Yeah. When it first Aww. was written, um, they I think they premiered it, I believe. They were one of the first anyway. And being the fact that, again, the writer is from South Carolina. I love that. Know, yeah. It's kind of neat. Yay. Mm-hmm. Cool. So that takes us to Scrappy Shakespeare. Now, Scrappy Shakespeare does a summer show. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're... If you don't know about Scrappy Shakespeare, they're a fun group. They're based in Spartanburg. Right. And it's in the name, Scrappy Shakespeare. Yeah. So they do Shakespeare shows and they, they do this guerrilla style, meaning they do it wherever, whenever. Uh, oh, really? I guess I didn't realize that. I thought maybe they had a space that they type of, they, you they know, outdoorsy space. They don't have a no? regular home. Okay. It, they've done it different ways and in different places in the past. Mm-hmm. Last season, and from what I understand, they're going to do the same this season. Last season... They put a schedule out and they did it in various venues and various spaces hmm. around Spartanburg. So cool. it would be in a restaurant or a bar one mm-hmm. night. It would be in a park space or right. a public space downtown mm-hmm. another night. So you just had to kind of check their schedule That's and see cool. when are they performing, where. Cause sometimes because they don't do a ticket sales, right? It's they don't. kind it's of free. like a free. It's, it's a free, free thing and they, they accept donations, of course. Right. You can donate so, yeah. to them. Um, they do a pass the hat gotcha. at, the, yeah. at the event, but mm-hmm. you can also... Go you know, online and sponsor. Do a bigger you know, donation if you're sure. interested in yeah. that. Um, but they're great because they they really do. They are super creative, super creative bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they well, they'd know, have to be especially to move spaces and do all that, right? Because you have to really act on the fly then and right. kind of adapt to your environment. Absolutely. So, yeah. so and they're very adaptable. Mm-hmm. All of them are trained. It's more than just you know your average high school drama club kind sure. of yeah. um, experience. They've had some advanced training, some experience. A lot of them are writers. Uh, most of them are involved also in improv mm-hmm. on some level. Right. So they're they're a super creative bunch. And they're yeah. going to be – you'll have to look for the schedule um, when they post it on their website mm-hmm. or Facebook, their various platforms where they announce that. But it's coming summer 2019, Much Ado About Nothing. Oh, that's great. Fun, 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 fun. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's a great segue to other summer festivals and, and shows that are happening because there's a couple more in the upstate mm-hmm. that operate during the summer. Two of them based in Greenville. Yeah. So we have Glow Lyric Theater, mm-hmm. which has a summer festival season. And they, they pack three shows into like a three-week space, which is quite amazing. Yeah. And, um, and kind of run them in a, in a repertory type of repeat for those three weeks. Each week has each of these shows. So I believe. Um, I know that's how it has been in the past. So I'm assuming that'll be the same way for this summer. But um. Well, yeah, actually, I have the date, so I can kind of yeah, there you go. <laughs> but at any rate, yeah, so they'll be running the best little whorehouse in Texas, mm. July eighteenth through August fourth. My Fair Lady, July twentieth through August second, a classic there, and Bizet's Carmen, July twenty sixth through August third. So as you can see with those dates, they're overlapping those productions throughout the run of their festival, and yeah, it's quite amazing how how they you know get it all in there. It yeah. is. It's a very. Com- it's kind of a complex schedule, but they get all these shows. So you'll you'll have to go to the website to look for the exact date of the exact show. Mm-hmm. And you can purchase like a membership to see all three oh, sure. of them, or yes, you can purchase individual tickets to just you know if you just want to see one or two of them. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, ways that you can catch those shows. Yeah. Right. So 
two musicals and an opera this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. Um, and they, they typically do that. They do opera, operetta, and musicals. Mm-hmm. Yep. They've, yeah. So it's very exciting. It's going to be a great season. Some of these we haven't seen on stage in the upstate in mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah, Best Little Horrors. I don't think, I don't, you know, I haven't seen it in the upstate. And since I've been here anyway, I've not, I don't remember seeing an announced It's been production. a long yeah. time since it's been on stage in the upstate. I mean, the, the last time I did see it was 30 years ago, I think, in upstate right. New York. <laughs> right, So, you know, right. I mean, it's yeah. been a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I was in it about 25 years, 20 okay. years ago, so <laughs> a long time ago. So it's kind of neat to see that one get a, um, yeah. you know, a, a reappearance. Yeah. I know they're... Their kind of overarching theme for the season is women's empowerment. Mm-hmm. So kind of all these are stories of women and how they found agency in their particular circumstance. Oh, okay. So they're in particular circumstances in particular cultures in particular time periods, right. which could limit you in, right. in what you can do and how you can take agency over your life. So I know that's going to be kind of the focus and, mm-hmm. and why they have selected these three shows with very strong female heroines mm. in them. I also know with Glow this year and in, in keeping with that theme of, of um, w- women empowerment or women overcoming circumstances or what have you um, they have a featured um, I think it's a fundraiser but one of our local actresses and writers Jessica Eckenrod is producing for Glow uh, something an original piece called Her Story oh. and it's yeah that's coming out I think in the next couple months oh cool um, yeah and so again featuring uh, women who are um, you know telling stories and overcoming obstacles and um, um, you know, getting their voice heard. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So that's Glow. Mm-hmm. And then we have another summer season from Upstate Shakespeare Festival. Yeah, something that happens, you know, every year in the Upstate in Greenville in the downtown park setting. Um, yes, they have Falls the, Park. Yeah. And this year it's their 25th anniversary yes. season. I can't, you know, I can't believe it. And John years. Fagan's been like helming that that um, series for probably three quarters of that. Easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so this year they'll have Romeo and Juliet, a classic, which yes. is wonderful. And, and I think such so accessible for many people. You know, the, to introduce people to Shakespeare, mm-hmm. this is a great piece because mm-hmm. um, the story is somewhat familiar. And then you can kind of tune your ear to how Shakespeare is is telling the story, mm-hmm. you know. And I think you can, you can follow a little bit along because you're so familiar, you know, mm-hmm. with that story. And that will run May 22nd through June 16th. And then The Tempest, another classic, of course, July 11th through August 4th. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Tempest is fun. It's not one that you see that often. Right. But it is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a fun show because it's got fantastical characters. Mm -hmm. Right. There's uh, much like Midsummer's Night's Dream where you kind of have magic at play and sprites that are mischievous and making trouble. You have that in The Tempest as well. So. It, there's a lot of room for imagination with the Tempest. Yeah, very it's good cool. times. Yeah. We want Will. We want Will. Ladies and gentlemen, we all will. the way from Stratford upon will. Avon, the we king of couplets, the sultan will. of sonnets, the man who put the will. I am we in iambic will. pentameter. Please will. put your hands together for the one, will. the only, William Shakespeare! Tutors out there, a little sonnet that's been very good to me. Let's see if you know it. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Yeah, now I'm more lovely and more temperate, and the rough wind shake the darling buds of May. Yeah, and summer's leaves have all too short a date. I adore the adoration, though others may have called it. It's quite a new sensation. What shall we call it? Can you feel it? Yeah. Oh, I can feel it too. Okay. So coming out of the summer, mm-hmm. I'm back to the colder months. <laughs> <laughs> to the fall and winter. To the fall and winter. Because yep. uh, most of the time, I would say, seasons tend to run kind of like a school year. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of your... Yep. So they start in the fall and they typically end in the, the, in the spring, the beginning of maybe summer, the yeah. summer. Yeah. So that's why we kind of separated out. There was a few summer. Mm-hmm. But coming back to your school calendar type setup, we have Greenville Theater's new season, which kicks off in September. Yeah. 
on their main stage, they're going to start out with Newsies. Newsies. What a lot of fun. That's yes. such a favorite. I mean, it is yeah. a wonderful show. It's high dance, high yeah, energy. Yeah, a lot of dance. You know, lo- you know, young, fresh casts. And, you know, it's it's really kind of a, a neat show. I know it's funny. It's been around for a while as far as uh, a story. It was a movie, you know, done um, by Disney years ago. Right. It's and, a Disney show. Yeah, it's a Disney yeah. show. And then it was just a few years ago that they turned it into a, a Broadway musical. And that's a lot of fun. It was a tour a couple years ago through on the Broadway series with the Peace Center and it was a, a really wonderful production so I'm looking forward to seeing what, mm-hmm. what uh, the Greenville Theater will do with that and I've never seen that on stage so no. that'll be fun come on I've not seen that one. Oh, okay well there you go I'm not even sure if I because it was a movie first yes yeah. and I'm not even sure I saw the movie Christian Bale was in the movie he was yeah. when he was a kid and well he was a singer and obviously a dancer yeah I remember Christian Bale when he was in Empire of the Sun which was his big breakout, and he was a child actor. At the oh, point. okay. So Newsies happening in September 13th through 19th, and then The Game's Afoot, October 25th through November 10th, mm-hmm. and that is a classic Sherlock Holmes Sherlock type Holmes-y. of... It's yeah. not you know, typical Ken Holmes. Ludwig? Yeah, it's Ken Ludwig, I believe so, anyway. Who is and, who's known for his farces. Yes, exactly. Ken Ludwig. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that'll be fun, I'm sure, and then they'll be following that up with their... Uh, a classic Christmas tale, a Christmas carol yep. in December that from the 12th Somebody's to the 22nd. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think we'll see a couple times this year. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, which is really cool, um, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, which will yes. be in March 6th through the 22nd. That's just newly been released for um, theaters, community theaters and professional theaters to do around the country. So that'll be, uh, and that's a, a really a lot of fun. That's a, a major piece for, for one particular actor to really step yes. in and play all these different roles so yes that'll be fun to see it's a big musical we yeah. should know if you don't if you're not familiar with it it took home several tonys the year mm-hmm. it was released on broadway yeah. and it is it's a tour de force for yeah. that lead actor yeah a lot Oof. of fun yeah and then of course dixie swim club a southern classic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that will be in april uh the 10th through the 26th mm-hmm and then closing out their season, another fun one we haven't seen for a few years in the upstate, The Producers. Yes. Yeah. June 5th through the 28th, that closes out their season. And The Producers is fun. Oh, yeah, it's very funny. We've both very been funny. involved in productions of that yeah, before. Yeah, it's very funny. And then we have Center Stage in Greenville. Mm-hmm. They have announced their main stage productions for next year. They're going to open with... Little Shop of Horrors. Another cult classic. Yes, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then their Christmas fair is A Holly Jolly Christmas. I think that's an original piece that they're going to be is doing. It? I think so. Okay. Uh, something akin to maybe what they did last year, um, this oh, last a, Christmas. Oh, kind of variety show? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. fun, fun. And then I Feel Good is their rock show this mm-hmm. year. It's A Trip to Motown. Motown, so. always Motown great. Music. Always yep. great. And then their big spring musical will be Nine to Five. The musical. Funny show. I yep. love that movie. I think that movie yeah. is hysterical. And actually, I like the musical, too. I mm-hmm. mean, um, but the movie is really very funny. So yeah, It is. It's, really it's a fun piece. Mm-hmm. And then their spring play is Around the World in 80 Days. Another one you haven't seen. And I, I mean, the title, no. of course, has been around for a long time. And it's, yeah. it's spun um, television series and books and, you know, all that kind of thing. So that'll be kind of interesting to see. Yeah. I've not seen that on stage. Yeah. Okay. So, well, there you go. Good times. And then the ever popular, there's a big summer musical, mm-hmm. super popular title, Buddy, the Buddy Holly story. There you go. A great, yeah, yeah. That's a great piece with wonderful music. And of course. I'm sure it will be a super big hit. It will. Yeah. It will. It always is every time it's done. Everybody yeah. loves Buddy Holly music. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they have, of course, their Fringe series. So these usually are typically a little less known. Mm-hmm. A lot of these are new pieces that haven't been around. But some of these have been. Yeah. Uh, I know some of these titles. So they're opening their Fringe series with Detroit. Mm-hmm. Then they're doing a show called Star Bright. Right. The Night Mother. Night Mother. That's one. Of, that's really the only title that I'm kind of. Yeah, that with. one's been around a while, right. and that's a, it's good. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, heavy. Um, it's a it's yeah, it's heavy and yeah, and a lot of times the Fringe series is, it is. It yeah, tends it's more to dramatic. be a little edgier, sure. a little dramatic. And then their final Fringe series show is Water by the Spoonful. Mm-hmm. Very good. So that's their Fringe. All right. Then back downtown to another Greenville theater, the Warehouse Theater. They're opening their season with the classic The Crucible. Yeah. September 20th through October 13th. And if you haven't seen that on stage mm, yeah. or been in it, yeah. I was in it. Yeah. <laughs> in high school, of course. Sure, high school production. Sure. Yeah. So I love The Crucible. Yeah. I think that'll be great. Cool. Followed by the Thanksgiving play. Right. Which is November 8th through the 24th. 
Appropriate timing. There you go. Very good. And then The Heath, January 10th through the 26th, followed by a big old musical, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. A big old musical, but kind of an alternative musical. Very, yeah, very much so. Not My Fair Lady. No, 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 no. Rock, rock music. Yeah, hard rock music. Yeah. 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 But that'll be a very edgy show. Mm -hmm. That'll be very. Mm -hmm. And then 100 Saints You Should Know, which will run April 17th through May 3rd. And then closing out their season will be appropriate May 29th through June 21st. And also in Greenville is the South Carolina Children's Theater. Mm -hmm. And they have a fabulous season lined up. They are starting with Ella Enchanted the Musical, September 7th through 22nd. Mm -hmm. Then Charlie Brown Christmas, November 29th through 8th. Another production. Yeah. It's a classic and people love it. Yeah, Yeah, people love it. And then Willy Wonka, TYA, and TYA meaning Theater for Young Audiences. Mm-hmm, that's so right. that's like a junior version that's of correct. Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. And that's January 24th through February 2nd. Excellent. And then Curious George, The Golden Meatball, <laughs> which that just makes me laugh, Golden Meatballs. <laughs> and that's going to run April 25th through May 3rd. Yeah. And that doesn't actually close out their season. They have another one planned, I believe, that they haven't announced because, they, as you know, they're in this big mm-hmm. building process. They're building a, a brand new theater there down on Augusta. Augusta Road? Augusta Road. There we go. Augusta Road. And um, it's, and they're hoping, I think, to have it um, up and ready where they'll then do the final show of the season in their new space. Ooh. So then I think they'll announce it, what it'll be, and it'll probably be something it'll spectacular. It'll be big. It'll like, be a big, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But, really, but we'll yeah. get more information as that comes closer to it. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to watch for that. Yeah, absolutely. Exciting. Mm-hmm. And then we have the Peace Center yeah. and their Broadway series, which, of course, are all professional tours. Mm-hmm. Coming out of New York, right. most of them. Mm-hmm. Um, not local people, usually. Right. And this is this is a great lineup. Yeah. Why don't you take it away? It's super. I mean, this year there's 11 productions. It's 11. huge. I mean, last year was nine. seems like it grows each year a little mm-hmm. bit. And sometimes they give you some variation in how you choose your packages, I guess. So this gives people a little bit of choice in how they build what right. they'd like to see. So that's kind of cool. And they're going to be opening with The Band's Visit, which won a couple of Yay. Tonys. A couple, and that's going to run August 27th through September 1st. I'm looking forward to that one. That's, I yeah, am too. Yeah. I really want to see that one. I, hear, I haven't seen it, but I hear wonderful things yeah me too me too followed by charlie and the chocolate factory so that'll be a fun family favorite i Mm -hmm. think coming you know i um that's going to run october 1st through the 6th so that Mm -hmm. should be a really good time i expect to see lots of kids in the audience yeah for Mm -hmm. sure Mm -hmm. for sure and then once on this island um which has been on broadway for the last couple of years in a Mm -hmm. revival uh, and that's going to be starting its tour and we'll be having them there at the peace center november 5th through the 10th Mm -hmm. And then beautiful, the Carol King musical, which was here two seasons ago, I believe. Was it? Yeah. Okay. And it was it was great. I mean, it was beautiful, actually. <laughs> and um, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was it was it's just one of those it's just amazing when you see the show, all the different songs you didn't realize that Carol King wrote. Right. You know, right. for so many people before she kinda became famous in her own right, singing her own music. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a really neat um show that, you know, gives a, a biography of her life and and all that kind of thing so that'll be december 31st through january 5th i'm looking forward to that return that'll be great Mm -hmm. followed by another production not another production but my fair lady it'll be you know we have glows doing it and this will be the broadway tour production and that'll run january 28th through february 2nd Mm mm-hmm Followed by Disney's Aladdin. So we've got Disney's Aladdin Jr. at the Spartanburg Little Theater with you the theater. U Theater. Yes. And now we'll have Disney's Aladdin, the big version <laughs> for big kids, <laughs> um, coming through the Peace Center February 12th through the 23rd. Yes. And then we're going to have Les Miserables. It's coming back. It's back, people. My goodness. <laughs> March 3rd through 8th. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if not yeah, everybody's seen that... it. It's, it's a great show. I mean, super. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's a it's a heavier musical, of course. But, oh, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great show. Yeah. I don't get tired of it. I nope. don't mind seeing it several times. I don't either. I guess I kind of was looking forward for a new piece coming. You know, something <laughs> else that I haven't seen, you know. But this well, will be great. You got 11 there's plenty, choices. That's right. There's plenty of other things <laughs> to see. So that's true. So there's that one. And then there is Escape to Margaritaville. All right. And Jimmy. that's the Jimmy Buffett yeah, right. music. Okay. Yes. And then Summer, the Donna Summer musical. Man, all these. Jukebox s- musicals. Yeah. Cr- <laughs> incredible. And then Cats is playing June 23rd through 28th. No way. 
Memory. <laughs> Do you have a memory? <laughs> Not of that show. Okay. I don't actually. But you was... blocked it from your memory. <laughs> but that'll be incredible. Yeah. And then we're going to finish out the Broadway series with Jesus Christ Superstar, August 4th through 9th. Man, it's just a loaded, loaded it's season. Huge. There's, there's, there is absolutely, when you when they say there's something for everyone, there is really in that mm-hmm. in that lineup something for everyone. I mean, yeah, you, even really if you don't is. aspire to, to have the Broadway package, there's a couple shows in there that everybody would want to see yeah yeah. absolutely Mm -hmm. so it's an exciting season at the peace center and then what do we have going on at taylor's we have the logos theater in taylor's and the rest of their annual season because they've already been running they'll have the horse and his boy again it's running now in through april and then it's going to return uh summer 2019 and then the next production up for them is God Meant It for Good. You know, this theater has kind of a Christian focus mm-hmm. in, in the presentation that they um, that they do. So I don't know the show, but um, obviously it's spiritually related. Then the Princess Vagabond. And then I I think they're see they're another one of these theaters that runs a a calendar year a January right. through December as opposed to a school right. year exactly kind of, right. they do January to mm-hmm. December so then they'll close their season with a Christmas Carol another right. you know another version of that as well I think they have an original version that they that they kind of put together um, hmm. this last year and then they'll be bringing that again this next year cool so yeah. their own adaptation yep mm-hmm. very nice yep yep. And then the Market Theater Company in Anderson, they also rotate on a calendar year type season. So they have the rest of their season coming up. And this summer, we can see Bonnie and Clyde, the musical, happening May 17th through June 2nd. Mm -hmm. And then they have a Shakespeare in the Park that they do in Anderson. And they're going to do this year The Adventures of Pericles. Wow. June 21st through 24th. That's cool. That's not one you see very often. No, not at all. So yeah. that's exciting. Uh-huh. And then they are also doing one of my favorites. <laughs> one of the ones I got excited about earlier. Heather's the Musical. Is You're just going to see it everywhere. I might you? be seeing yeah. it yeah. every chance I get. <laughs> they're going to be doing Heather's the Musical July 19th through August 4th. And they have another show in the park. It's their Free in Carolina Ren Park series. They're doing Into the Woods in the park. That's kind of cool. That is cool. That's a that's a lot of work in the park, but yes, man, that's is. that's kind of that's really neat. I I re- would really like to see that in a kind of naturalized setting. I know they did it in New York City in the in Central Park a couple mm. years ago, and um and I thought that it was just a fabulous idea, you know. Yeah. But uh, what what a challenge though. I mean, it's a challenging show as it is, but let alone to put it outside and. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of cool. That's going to be awesome. So that's happening September 5th through 15th. Mm, nice time of year where the weather yeah. is, you know, hopefully still be really nice, I'm sure, but uh, right. hopefully uh, not as hot as, you right. know, as the summertime. Right. And then back indoors, they're going to be doing the 39 Steps, mm. October 10th through 20th. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to be finishing off their calendar year season in December with Junie B. Jones, Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, December 5th <laughs> through 15th. Uh, it's, a, it's a great title. Yeah. <laughs> and Junie B. Jones, if you don't know, yeah. is a popular, popular children's, children's book series. Mm-hmm. series. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that will be a family-friendly one. Absolutely. If you don't mind Batman smelling. <laughs> And then we're up to Milltown Players in Pelzer, mm-hmm. and they're going to be opening their season with Bright Star, and that will be running September 20th through October 6th. And we should mention that they are on that kind of academic, that school year yeah, type calendar. calendar. Sure. So we're back to that now. Mm-hmm. And then followed by Smoky Mountain Christmas, December 6th through 22nd. Which just sounds fun, mm-hmm. you know, Smoky Mountain yeah. Christmas, all the the great Christmas music, um, with that smoky. Appalachians. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Smoky flavor. <laughs> Smoky flavored there music. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by Moonlight and Magnolias, January 17th through February 2nd. And that's the play about the writing of Gone with the Wind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, for, I haven't actually seen that, but I hear it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah it is. Because I, I guess they, they've they locked themselves in this office yes. to finish the script or finish the story. The screenplay. The screenplay. They're, screen they're trying to adapt the That's book right. into the screenplay. Right. So they're, right. they're locked themselves in and, you know, all the <laughs> shenanigans that go along with that. So kind of fun. <laughs> Followed by Charlotte's Web in February. That's That will open the 28th through March 8th. And then Simple Man, Southern Rock Show. So they've gone this through this route, too, where they've, They've seen the popularity in bringing a rock show type of performance. Right, a concert. Yeah, a concert version. Um, So that's going to be running April 3rd through 26th, followed by a southern comedy, the Red Velvet Cake War, May 22nd through June 7th, 
and then closing out their season with a great American classic, The Music Man. Yes. yes. Running July 24th through August 9th. And I guess Will Raglan's going to reprise the role of The Music Man. Oh, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, you get to see him on stage. Well, that's appropriate. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's coming back to Broadway, mm-hmm. starring Hugh Jackman. That's right. And Sutton Foster. Huge Jackman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So Will yeah. Raglan is kind of like our local Hugh Jackman. There you go. <laughs> he's there our, you go. He's our local superstar. There you go. So there you go. Yeah, that'll be fun. I love it. <laughs> so that is that's a lot. And that is a ton. And we have and we're, this doesn't even include what the universities and colleges right, are doing. And there's some theaters that haven't announced yet. Right. So there'll be, there'll be more that comes out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which we'll bring into our podcast you know and when they're running and talk about them right yeah, sure. when that information comes out and you can always check on the websites of the various theaters absolutely to monitor what's happening when they're announcing mm-hmm. so but this is already yeah a cram packed oh my gosh it just gets more season and more and more. coming up yeah <laughs> it's insane Man, you, you couldn't possibly get to everything no 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 yeah. no way yeah um but fantastic for the upstate. Absolutely, yes, definitely. There's no excuse for not seeing some great no, um, not local at all. live theater, you know, because there's so much out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so much variety, mm-hmm. concerts and uh, dramas and classics and, and yep. music, mm-hmm. big crazy musicals, and then those edgy musicals, yeah. and then you know just anything you can imagine. Yeah, it's here. Children's theater. Yeah, Every- it's all there. Yeah, it's so here. We got it, people. We do. We, we got do, it we here do. in the upstate. Hot buying stuff they cannot I like drinking hard Max and Dad's credit card I like skipping Jim scaring her screwing him I like killer clothes kicking nerds in the nose If you like the balls you can go play dolls Let your mommy fix you a snack Whoa Or you could come smoke pound some rum and coke in my Porsche with the quarterback Whoa 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 Honey what you wait So, without further ado, that's what's coming, but there's stuff happening right now. That's right. So, let's take a look at that, Bruce. Sure. Another vote in another show in Philly, Boston, the Baltimore. Now playing in the upstate of South Carolina for the week of March 31st, 2019. Opening, we have Greenwood Little Theater. They are opening Almost Maine on Thursday, April 4th, and it runs through Sunday, April 7th. Oconee Community Theater in Seneca opens A Bad Year for Tomatoes on Friday, April 5th, and runs Fridays through Sundays through April 14th. Abbeville Opera House opens Hank Williams' Lost Highway on Friday, April 5th, and runs Fridays and Saturdays through April 20th. North Greenville University opens Taming of the Shrew Thursday, April 4th, and will run Thursdays through Saturdays through April 13th. Center Stage in Greenville features Broadway Showstoppers, part of their cabaret fundraising series, Monday, April 8th, and Tuesday, April 9th. Furman University Theater in Greenville opens John Proctor is the Villain on Tuesday, April 9th and runs through Sunday, April 14th. And Anderson University opens Dickens' Great Expectations Wednesday, April 10th and runs through April 13th. Shows continuing in the upstate. Continuing Friday, April 5th at Foothills Playhouse in Easley is their production of Charlotte's Web running on various days through April 14th. The Milltown Players in Pelzer continues Pump Boys and Dinettes Thursday, April 4th, and runs Thursdays through Sundays until April 14th. South Carolina Children's Theater in Greenville continues its run of A Year with Frog and Toad, Friday, April 5th, and runs through Sunday, April 7th. Center Stage in Greenville continues Into the Woods on Thursday, April 4th, and runs through Sunday, April 7th. Market Theatre Company in Anderson continues How I Became a Pirate on Friday, April 5th and runs through Sunday, April 7th. Yance Theatre Company in Fountain Inn continues The Hunchback of Notre Dame on Friday, April 4th and runs through Saturday, April 6th. 
Logos Theater in Taylor's continues The Horse and His Boy on Thursday, April 4th and runs alternating Thursdays and every Friday and Saturday through April 27th. Greenville's Cafe and Then Some's ongoing show, Say What?, continues on various days through April. And the Alchemy Comedy Theater offers a variety of improv and sketch shows at various times and days at Coffee Underground in Greenville. Check out the individual theater's websites for more details to all of these productions happening in the upstate. Then follow. Hello there, theater people. We hope you are enjoying spending time in the green room. Want to stay updated? Like and follow Thespis in the Green Room on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Thespis G. That's at sign Thespis G. T H E S P I S G. Want to support Thespis in the Green Room? If you like what you're hearing and want to encourage us to continue conversations in the Green Room, you can become a patron of the show. Visit our Patreon page. That's Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash thespis g and donate today no amount is too small and every little bit helps patrons will receive special content and audio extras through our patreon page check it out at patreon.com slash thespis g good night and thank you whoever we are grateful you found her a spot on the sound radio we'll think of you Special thanks to Dick Stevens of Stevens Magic and Fun. He can be found on Facebook at Stevens Magic and Fun. Thespis would like to extend a big thank you to our fellow podcasters, Teddy and the Baseman, for their help and guidance. Listeners can find Teddy and the Baseman at teddyandthebaseman.podbean.com or through podcast players, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Thespis in the Green Room is a Courageous Crossings production. Music used in this podcast is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. What comes next? You've been free. Welpers, I think that wraps oh it up. God. There's so much I'm going on. Just thinking I know. about it all, right? I know. Yeah. So much. I mean, just the show listings for this weekend. Mm -hmm. And then if you're trying to think ahead with yeah. all that we announced earlier, oh my goodness. Well, I just remember when I, you know, and I would see people that were making their theater arrangements, you know, they get out their calendar and they think, oh, I, know. Oh, I can't do this. I got this on this day, this show on this day. You know, they, you know, they you have have pencil to. it all in and then God forbid you go on vacation, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> then you got to, you know, yeah, reorganize leave the, the area. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah Pretty you, amazing. It is. It is. And you have, I think you have to do that kind of scheduling. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're, you're not going to make it to everything no mm -mm. and then after you do your calendar you got to look at your budget yeah. <laughs> you really should look at your budget first don't you reckon? maybe <laughs> maybe set your oh, yeah. set your theater allowance that's right yeah. say, okay <laughs> yeah, you can spend some cash that's for sure absolutely yeah, but it's great excellent I, I will say this though if you want to not spend the cash a lot of the theaters We'll take volunteer ushers. Mm -hmm, that's so true. that's one way you can see mm -hmm. shows without having to pay. Even at the Peace Center, there's a wonderful volunteer usher program, right? Which is great because it gets you know people involved from the community and they, and they get an opportunity to see the shows as well. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, mm -hmm. contact those individual theaters and find out how, you how can that help. works. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Very good. Okay. Well, that's going to have to be it because so, we need a break. I am, I am exhausted. I need a drink. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, good to see you again, Melanie. As usual. It was fun catching up. It was. Yeah, and we'll look forward to next time. All righty. See ya. Bye.